All right, ladies and gentlemen, hang with me here. This is section 3.2b, where we're still solving systems, meaning we are still looking for some x comma y as our answer. We're doing it algebraically, and we're using the elimination method. Before you looked at the substitution method, where you looked for x equals something or y equals something to get your problem started, but this time, what we're going to focus on is getting the like terms into columns with each other. That's how we're going to start this problem. You have to hang with me here in this lesson. I am battling a cold, so I will try my best to keep this moving for you. So for this method, right here you see that you actually have the first problem set up nicely for you, where you have your x's in a column and you have your y's in a column. Once they're in like terms, we want to get some sort of coefficients that are opposites. So again, here you have x's and y's, and this one is already nicely set up where the 3x and the negative 3x are opposites, and they're set to go. If this is not true, we have to multiply the terms of the equations by some number. We'll see an example of that a little bit later. Once you have opposites, though, you can go ahead and add the equations. This is important for us. We're always adding them. So you draw a bar, and you add coming down. So 3x plus a negative 3x gives you 0x, so these cancel. 1y minus 2y is negative 1y. Negative 9 plus 12 is positive 3. And then we can solve this for our variable, so divide everything through by a negative 1. So we get y equals negative 3. That's part of our answer. Just like we did before for substitution, we're going to have to take him back up and plug him into one of the equations, does not matter which one, and then solve for the x variable. So this one here I think will be easiest because y is by itself when we plug it in. We'll do 3x plus y equals negative 9, substitute negative 3, so we get 3x minus 3 is negative 9, add 3 to both sides. and isolate our x, so we get negative 2. So these two pieces together, negative 2 comma negative 3, this would be our answer, our solution point. Now, we should check this really quick to make sure it works. So if we plug in um, 3 space plus y space equals negative 9, negative 2 plus negative 3. This gives us negative 6 minus 3. Yes, that would be negative 9. Check. So we know that this guy works. That's our solution. Let's look at another example. Notice how if you look at the examples 2 and 3 on your next page, that they are set up so that they're lined up in the correct columns. We have m over m's, n over n's, x's over x's, and y's over y's. That's good. However, notice that there's no opposites in here, right? There's no 2 and negative 2. There's no 4 and negative 4. So this is one of the examples where we're going to have to multiply our equations before we can use them. Now, it does not matter um, which variable we choose to cancel. We could choose to cancel the m's or the n's. In this case, let's go ahead and let's choose to cancel whatever's first. So in that case, um, it would be the m's here that we want to cancel. So we need to think about what number 2 and 3 both go into so that we can create that new number. The easiest number we could come up with for 2 and 3 would be a 6. So we want to multiply this top equation by whatever will make this a 6 in front of our m. That means we'll need to multiply the top equation by 3. That would give us 6m plus 12 n, notice I'm distributing to all of these things here, equals negative 12. We then need to ask ourselves, what can we multiply the bottom equation by, not just to get a 6m, but remember we want opposites, right? We want a negative 6m so that they will cancel. So what do we multiply this by to get negative 6m? This would be a negative 2. So distribute the negative 2 to all your pieces. So negative 6m negative 10n equals positive 6. Once it's set up, 
This looks like our first example. We can line these up. We could say, okay, add 6m minus 6m cancels. 12n minus 10n is 2n. And then we get a negative 6. Okay, that's part of our solution. Take this and plug him back into one of the originals. Again, does not matter. So I'm going to put the n in for this one. So here's your solution. Whenever you have variables that are not x and y, you can write them as an ordered pair, but it's a little funny because it's not x's and y's. So uh, you could say that this is 4 comma negative 3, but we're going to make sure that we leave these guys here since that's a little, uh, makes a little bit more sense for us. Again, you'd want to check your answer. So if we plug in um, 2 space plus 4 space equals negative 4. Just check it really quick. 2 times 4 would be 8. 4 times negative 3 would be negative 12. And yes, 8 minus a 12 would be a negative 4. Check. So this guy works. Alright, for this one, we see that everything is lined up in the right columns, but we don't have any opposites yet. We're kind of close. We have a negative and a positive. So let's go ahead and let's multiply this top equation by 2. That will give us a negative 6 and a positive 6. And again, remember the 2 goes to everything. And then this guy just copies over as normal. And then we add, so these cancel, and then, oh goodness, look at these, these cancel as well. So this was a zero here, my bad. Um, so we get zero on this side equals 12. Now, remember what we looked at for inequalities when we would find true and false statements? This is a false statement. That's not possible. And we know for false statements that we get a no solution. Think about what types of lines will give you a no solution. Remember back in our systems, we said that parallel lines will never intersect, and that's what's happening here. We have a no solution answer, because if we were to graph these two lines, they would actually be parallel to one another. So that's a special case that sometimes comes up. All right, let's try this one. Before we canceled the x's, let's see if we could cancel the y's this time. This is a negative 10y, here's a positive 5y, so let's go ahead and let's multiply the top by 2. Again, 2 distributes to everything. And then our second one, we're just going to copy over as is, there's nothing special. Cancel, cancel, so we get 0, and this time we get 0 equals 0. Now this statement we know to be a true statement. And remember from what we learned about inequalities, when you see a true statement, that actually means all real numbers. So think about what type of system would have all real numbers. If the parallel lines were no solution, the all real numbers are going to be the two lines that lie right on top of each other. Remember those? Those were called our dependent system. That's what's happening here. So make a quick note for yourself at the bottom of this page. Special cases. When you have parallel lines, parallel lines like this, and then um, we would say no solution for these. Algebraically, this comes across when you have um, same slopes or when you get a false statement. 
So for example, we got the 0 equals 12. We knew that was false, and we knew that that meant that there was a no solution here. On the other hand, you might have the same line, which is where you have one line right on top of the other line, and this one we'll say is um, all real numbers. So there's infinitely many solutions. It's the same line, and for these ones we will get true statements. For example, when we got 0 equals 0, or we might get 7 equals 7, or negative 3 equals negative 3. Those all tell us that it's two lines that are exactly the same.